Okay, let's look at some uh, examples with the mean value theorem. So example four, determine if the theorem can be applied, and if so, find all values of C in the open interval from A to B such that this equation holds true. Okay, so if we look at it, it's almost like the same thing as Rolle's theorem. It's just we don't have to check f of A equals f of B. So with this function, is it continuous on this interval? No. So it's not continuous on negative one to two. So the theorem doesn't apply. It's kind of nice because now you're done. So move on to the next one. Okay, so is F continuous on this interval? Why, yes it is. Is it differentiable on the open interval? Well, if you're not sure, take the derivative and look at it. So that would be one third x to the negative two thirds or one over three x to the two thirds. Is there a number that you can't plug in for x? Yeah, that would be x equals zero. Is it inside the interval? Why, yes it is. So it's not differentiable at x equals zero. So the mean value theorem doesn't, oops, doesn't apply. Okay, so just because they say determine if you can use it, doesn't mean that it has to be used. It can be a big old no, it might not. <clears throat> okay, part C, uh, same type of thing. So this is a polynomial, so we know that it's continuous and differentiable. All right, so that's all you have to check. There's no f of a equals f of b. So now you have to solve what the theorem guarantees. So the theorem guarantees or says to solve the derivative is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So you have to solve this equation out, which means you've got to kind of work both sides down to something where you can then solve it. So let's do the left side, the derivative of C. So just find the derivative and just put in C's. Uh, or if, I mean, if you just do the derivative with X's, that's okay too. So that would be four C to the third minus eight. Now the right side, just calculate this out. What is f of two? Well, that would be zero. What's f of zero? Zero. And the denominator is two. So your left side is just four c to the third minus eight. The right side is just zero. Well, now you've got something where you can kind of grasp and uh, get your hands on it and solve it. So c to the third would equal two. So c is the cube root of two. Oops, of two. Dang it. There you go. Okay, and then just make sure that your answer is in your interval, and this one is. If it's not, then one of two things happened. Either you can't actually apply it and you thought you could, uh, or somewhere you did a, you made a mistake in your solution. But if you can apply the theorem, there has to be at least one answer. There might be more, but you have to have at least one solution in this interval. All right, part D. Uh, G, is that continuous what, on this interval? Why, yes it is. You can plug every number inside this interval and for x, and it gives you an answer. So g is continuous on 
in the interval. And is it differentiable? Well, if you're not sure, get the derivative. So the derivative would be a negative one half times two minus x to the negative half. And if you're going, wow, he did that kind of fast. It's like, well, yeah. Uh, and you guys should be kind of at that same point where the, a derivative of this should be somewhat quick. So that would flip down to the denominator. So now, is there one value of c that you can't, or of x, that you can't plug in uh, in for x? And that would be yes, you can't plug in two, but here's the thing. It has to be differentiable on the open interval, not the closed. So two, or the endpoints, are not considered when you're looking at differentiability. So g uh, is differentiable on the open interval from negative seven to two. So just continuity has to be the, the whole thing, differentiability, you leave out the endpoints. Okay, so now you have to solve g prime of c is equal to g of two minus g of negative seven all over two minus the negative seven. So g prime of c, that's just this with a c in there. Oops, and I forgot the half in the denominator. And then when you work this out, g of two, that's just zero. G of negative seven, that's three. Two minus the negative seven is nine. So negative one over two root two minus C is equal to a negative one third. <clears throat> so we can take the reciprocal of both sides and then cancel the negatives out. <clears throat> can divide the two over. Square both sides. So C, <clears throat> oops. Those should be threes. So C should equal a negative one fourth, and that's inside your interval from negative seven to two. So we are good to go. All right, we have one more example, and this is more of a critical thinking type question. Uh, so something similar to what you might find on the exam. Uh, for me, like it's not enough to know, just know what the theorem says. You gotta understand the concept that's driving it. Like, do you actually know and understand what it says, or can you just regurgitate the material? Okay, so example five. If a function f is differentiable on the closed interval from negative four to four, then which of the following statements is true? Okay, so one, uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals f of c uh, for all c in the interval. Well, that's gonna be true. Because this right here, that's one of the criteria for continuity and they didn't tell you directly that it was continuous, but you know that if it's differentiable, that means it's also continuous. Differentiability implies continuity, not the other way around. But if it's differentiable on that interval, it's also continuous, which means this is gonna be true. Okay, uh, second statement, the derivative is zero for some c in the interval. So you know it's continuous, it's differentiable, but you're missing something. You don't have the f of negative four equals f of four. So right here, they've really disguised a Rolle's theorem statement to see if you knew how to apply it. So you're missing that third criteria for Rolle's theorem. So it might be true, but it's not guaranteed. 
which means it's going to be false. Okay, third statement, the conclusion of the mean value theorem applies to F. Well, this one is going to be true because the mean value theorem just says it had to be continuous and differentiable. And you know that it is, so then you could go through and do this if you actually had the function. So one and three are true, so part or answer B. All right, that's gonna do it for 4.2. So give it a shot uh, for the homework questions and let me know if you have any questions.